About one in four American adults take cholesterol-lowering drugs known as statins. But lately, there's been a surge of research about the side effects of those widely prescribed drugs. Joining me to talk about her newly published research on the link between statins and fatigue is Dr. Beatrice Golem, the Associate Professor of Medicine at UC San Diego School of Medicine. Also with us is cardiologist Mimi Garneri. Of the, she is the founder of Scripps Center for Integrative Medicine. Thank you both for joining me here today. Um, I'm going to start with you first. Let's talk about what class of drugs in this study, it was statins, mm -hmm. what specific drugs did you actually look at? We looked at the drugs that people will know best by their trade names, Zocor and Prevacol, and we chose these two agents because they're at the extremes of being the most fat soluble and the most water soluble. And these properties have been thought to maybe contribute to differences between the statin drugs. Also, they w were the most widely prescribed statins, then Lipitor um, s surpassed them, um, but they were the number two and number three most prescribed statins as well. But all statins would kind of qualify for this study. The purpose of choosing those two was the hope that they would reflect statin properties generally, particularly if the findings were concordant. Okay, and Dr. Gollum, what were the side effects that you found in your study? Well, this particular study looked specifically at the issues of energy and fatigue with exertion because these are problems that are widely reported by patients on statins. This was a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized trial, so patients didn't know if they were taking statin or placebo, and we asked them about their energy level and fatigue with exertion at baseline, and we asked them about any change in this on follow-up. Okay, and Dr. Ganeri, now, this isn't the first side effect that's been reported. The FDA issued some warnings back in February for label use for other serious side effects like uh, liver problems and, and things and memory loss. What has been your experience in seeing patients who are on statins? I think the most important thing is to know when to use a statin. Statins are anti-inflammatory. They can decrease the risk of a cardiovascular event or a stroke. What's important to know is they can deplete the body of important nutrients like CoQ10 or ubiquinone, fatty acids in the membranes, vitamin E in the cell membrane, and even carnitine. So we need to know what are the downstream effects of these drugs, and that actually helps us to understand why this great study found fatigue. Well, let's talk about if you could briefly explain what cholesterol is and how it kind of moves through the body and why it's a problem. Most cholesterol comes from the food we eat. If we eat from an animal, if it's an animal product, whether it's beef, pork, or lamb, or chicken, or turkey, or even fish, it has cholesterol. Cholesterol in itself is not the problem. What happens is it gets into the lining of the blood vessel and it is changed. It becomes oxidized or something we say glycosylated, acetylated. Then it's picked up by these white blood cells and those white blood cells, when they break, something called macrophages, damage the lining of the blood vessel. So it's not so much the cholesterol that's the problem, it's what happens to it, usually the result of inflammation, that leads to the issues. And the issues being stroke, heart attack? Absolutely. I mean, mainly stroke and heart attack. Those are the two big ones, and also blockage in the arteries to the legs, what we call peripheral vascular disease. Okay. And I wanted to come back to you, Dr. Gollum, and ask, how do statins actually lower cholesterol? How do they break up those white blood cells cholesterol packs that are in the blood vessels? Well, in principle, the, the reason why they lower cholesterol is by blocking the rate-limiting step in the pathway that produces cholesterol. It actually turns out that there are other mechanisms as well, but I think that might be too complicated for this menu. Well, in talking about mechanisms, tell us how, how do they cause fatigue? Well, the presumption is that one of the major ways by which they cause fatigue is um, relates to some of the things that Dr. Guarneri mentioned, which is that they, among the things that they inhibit production of are coenzyme Q10, which is directly involved in cell energy production and is also the key fat-soluble antioxidant that's made by the body. And it turns out that antioxidants are particularly important for the energy-producing parts of cells. They're the leading target of um, what's called oxidative stress that antioxidants protect against. Cholesterol, it is not, it's not just the case that these substances like CoQ10 and something else called heme involved in energy production are part of the pathway that statins inhibit. It's also the case that cholesterol, which is also produced by every cell in the body, has important functions including transport of key fat-soluble vitamins, including coenzyme Q10, vitamin E, carotenoids, which are the precursors for vitamin A, and even vitamin D, even though it has its own transport protein, actually travels in the blood in association with lipids and is taken up into cells by the LDL receptor. 
So it's important to have some cholesterol, but not an excessive amount of the bad cholesterol as we're used to talking. Now, I don't have a whole lot of time, but I want to ask you both, who should be taking statins? I'll start with you first, and then I think I'll ask you who should not be taking statins. So who, after all of this study and, and the new knowledge that we know, should be taking statins? My index of whether any preventive medicine should be used is for that group of individuals, has the benefits been shown to exceed the risk using outcomes that objectively balance risk and benefit, like all-cause mortality or all-cause serious adverse events, by the old definition. And by this criterion, men under the age of 70 or 75 who have heart disease on average receive benefit, life extension, et cetera. Um, but actually women, even if they have heart disease, or elderly, even if they have heart disease, generally have not been found to have life extension or all-cause benefit, nor people who are at low risk. And that would just uh, let me say, she said, okay, so women, not so much. So what is, uh, just very briefly, an alternative to statins? Oh, we have lots of options. First is to eat lots of fiber. Limit animal products in your diet. And then we have many things like niacin, for example, low is LDL, the bad cholesterol. We have uh, nutraceuticals like citrus bergamot, which lowers LDL. We have plant stanols, which lowers LDL. So if you come and see a good integrative cardiologist, for example, we're going to get you eating right, get you on the right nutraceuticals. And there's one thing we have to say to your audience, which is the statins also affect thyroid function conversion of T4 to T3, and that can also explain the fatigue, so we can't forget that part as well. Well, you can hear a lot more about this discussion, obviously a huge discussion on our website at kpbs.org. Dr. Ganeri, Dr. Gollum, thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you so much us. for having us. Thank you.